Welcome to Bite Size Green. I'm your host, Angelina Le Gris. Today we're going to be talking about solar cooking with Michael Mora with this, from the Solar Cookers International. Michael's going to tell us about the basic concepts of solar cooking and talk about several different cookers that are available. Then we're going to see how we can make ratatouille, polenta, and a strawberry and rhubarb crisp in the solar cookers. Finally, we'll talk about the important benefits of solar cooker and the serious work that Solar Cookers International is doing in the developing world to help those folks deal with very basic survival needs. Welcome, more, uh, Michael. I'm very happy to have you with us today. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here to be able to introduce the co basic concepts of solar cooking to uh, people who may never have heard of it or uh, believed in it before. I'd never heard of it before this, and it's really fascinating. Now, first let's talk about Solar Cookers International. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about the organization and its mission? Yes, it's a nonprofit tax-deductible uh, organization, and we're dedicated to promoting, educating, um, and advocating the use of solar cookers in the developing world. So much of our outreach is in Eastern Africa, uh, Darfur and other places. Wonderful. And you are also a business owner. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have my own solar electric business in Palo Alto. It's called Solectric. And just as an interesting note, what did you drive to come here today? I have a, to a production Toyota RAV4 electric vehicle that I've owned since 2002. Wonderful. I love the commitment to renewable energy. Thank you. So let's start talking about, so, talking about solar cooking. Could you go over the basic concepts of solar cooking? How can I cook with the sun? Okay, well let me start with some basic ideas about solar cookers. There's three elements that we need to have for a solar cooker. One of them is a dark pot. So let me hold this one up here. Uh, a dark pot, it's lightweight, uh, enameled steel. You don't want something that's too heavy. You want something that will heat up quickly. And the significance of it being dark? Uh, is that it absorbs the sun rays. A dark object will get hotter faster in the sun than a, a reflective object. Okay. The second element uh, is a way to concentrate the sun's rays. So here we have a reflector. This particular solar cooker, which is one of the most basic types, is made out of cardboard. Uh, and what's a nice feature of it is that it folds up into a nice flat package like this which makes it appropriate, for example, for backpacking. Very portable, very convenient. Right. And it's a design which is easily replicated. In fact, you can get it off of Solar Cooker International's website, uh, and it's been replicated tens of thousands of times in the developing world for many of our uh, clients and uh, NGOs. Okay, so this is the reflector. It concentrates the sun's rays. We've heated up the object, and then we have to have a way to trap that uh, heat. In this particular case, we use an oven bag. A high, it's, this isn't just any plastic bag. It's a high temperature roasting bag, which you can buy at any grocery store. This next solar cooker has the same elements. It's got a reflector for concentrating the sun's rays. It's got a window to let the sunlight into the solar cooker chamber. And you can see the, my hand behind the window here. And what's that window made of? This window is made out of plastic. Okay. And the outer, oh, incidentally, the outer case of this particular cooker is made out of recycled soda bottles. So actually the embedded energy, the energy it took to make it is quite low. And let me just tip and then that a is, little for right. the camera to okay. get a better view. And that's the cooking chamber where this pot would, or whatever you're cooking in would fit inside it. And, and it's also all too, dark. It's, it's all, all dark. very black. Right, so it absorbs energy. So not only does the pot absorb energy, but so does the inside of the cooking chamber. And here's a, an oven thermometer. This particular cooker, by the way, will easily get up, up to 350 degrees. That's I, amazing. I bake cookies in it all the time. time. I bake breads, all sorts of things. Here's another cooker. Again, the same set of principles. We have a reflector for concentrating the sun's rays. We have a black pot. This one here is a, propri is a proprietary, or not proprietary, but it's a uh, designed around uh, specific uh, fits. In other words, this black bowl was uh, made to specifically to fit inside of this uh, Pyrex bowl. Um, so here's the black object. You put your food in here. 
It heats up in the sun. The sun, sun's rays coming from the reflector and directly from the sun go into the, through the glass bowl, which traps the heat. And here's a, a glass cover which further traps the heat. So those are, again, the three elements, um, a black object, a reflector, and some way to create that greenhouse effect to trap that heat. And if I didn't have this special bowl, could I still use a cooker of this style? Yes, in fact, we could use an, uh, an oven bag and, like one. and a pot just like that one over there. For example, like the first one that I showed, uh, we, could we could put that one in here. That would work in a pinch. Great. And these are all commercially available? These are all commercially available. Um, uh, this particular design uh, is basically considered open source. We actually have the design that you can trace uh, from our website, Solar Cookers International. And what kind of materials would you need? To it's, ma it's made out of cardboard, so you would need cardboard, a sharp knife, uh, some tin foil, and some uh, white glue or wheat paste glue. And just with that, I could be cooking in the sun? With just with that, you could be cooking in the sun with a lightweight, again, a lightweight black metal pot and some way to trap the heat. In this case, again, the oven bag. So if I wanted to start um, with a particular oven, how would I choose which one that I'd want to use? Are there trade-offs with the different types? Um, if this one here would probably, and there's not that much difference between the three that are depicted here or shown here. Okay. But I would say that if I were to give them a grade, um, I would say this one is probably a little bit less efficient. This one, I these two are equal efficiency in terms of actually uh, operating. At th these two will operate at a higher temperature than this one most of the time. I see. Now, in places that, where people live close to the equator, where most of the world, uh, there's about, a, solar cooking is appropriate for about a billion people on this planet. Wow. Yeah. So uh, people who have uh, suffer from fuel scarcity, uh, I would say any of these cookers for anyone who lives close to the equator is quite appropriate and useful. And what kind of food would I try to cook in? Anything that you would cook in a slow cooker, so, or a, or a crock pot. So stews, uh, pulses, rice, uh, chicken tetrazzini, breads, that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. baking, right. slow so cooker. Right, so you wouldn't make chapatis, for example. You okay. wouldn't make tortillas, but anything that would cook uh, with a bit of moisture, vegetables. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's a great segue into our film clip where I actually got a chance to cook with, slow, with uh, solar cookers.